Welcome to MCIX Tech Tips. For anyone who feels the need, the need for speed, really? And storage. The different combinations of RAID hard drives, controllers, accelerators, SSDs, bleh, it can all be very confusing. So today we'll be looking at two LSI RAID card setups, both of which are designed to make the process of creating and maintaining RAID arrays for maximum performance and reliability as easy as possible. For an overview of these two RAID cards, you can go ahead and click over here, but we're going to start with the Mega RAID 9361-8i. This is a 12 gigabit per second SAS controller card designed for servers that can, are designed to handle multiple users who will be primarily reading data. We hooked up eight ADATA SP920 SSDs in both RAID 0 and RAID 5 configurations to show off the maximum performance you can achieve, or also a more sensible solution that has tolerance for up to one drive to fail outright. Now the benchmark that we're using here is ASSSD, which uses random incompressible data and essentially it's kind of a worst case scenario for the drives. Even in this worst case scenario, we were able to achieve maximum sequential read speeds of 3,352 megabytes per second and write speeds of 1,303 megabytes per second. But for any type of important data, you're going to want to run in some other kind of RAID, like let's say 5 or 1. The dedicated processors on a RAID controller are designed to effectively direct traffic and ensure that the server CPU is not bogged down. They're also designed to calculate parity bits as you're writing data to the array, again, to reduce CPU overhead and improve performance. So with 8 SSDs in RAID 5, we were still able to achieve read speeds of over 3,200 megabytes per second, but writes dropped down to just just 250 megabytes per second due to that extra calculation that's going on. An additional feature of this RAID card is called Cachecade, which allows the use of an SSD as a cache for the other drives that are hooked up to it. So you can keep frequently accessed files or programs on it to further decrease waiting time. LSI expands upon this and includes this in their Nitro card. So this is the 8110-4i, which has a built-in dual 100 gig SSD array here, as well as capacitor back power surge protection. So for this controller, hooking up four additional SSDs via the cable, we, that, that's not how it's really designed to be used, because you'd be using SSDs to cache an SSD array that doesn't really make any sense. So we went for a more realistic, huge amount of traditional magnetic storage. So here are the benchmarks for a regular Western Digital red 4 terabyte drive by itself. Now, with the addition of the Nitro 200 gig SSD cache and a RAID 5, we can see a maximum read speed of 900 megabytes per second on traditional hard drives. The random 4K read speeds also go up dramatically, but as predicted, the write speeds actually go down. This is all due to the controller maximizing performance for reads, making sure that concurrent users do not affect each other. On top of that, RAID 5 just inherently has slower writes than any kind of RAID that doesn't involve parity calculations. Another thing to note about RAID 5 is is that it does offer disk hot swapping. So if there is a failure, then you can fix it with absolutely zero downtime. I think what we mean is hot spare. So that means you could have a RAID 5 with three of these drives with one assigned as a permanent hot spare. So the second one of them dies, it'll go ahead and start rebuilding itself. Now, obviously, an all flash solution like the 920 array over here is going to be the fastest, but it's still super expensive. Even with the dropping prices of SSDs, and this eight SSD RAID solution cost us $1,700 for just two terabytes of storage. The reliable and fast Nitro option gives us 16 terabytes of still very fast storage for under $3,600. So that's eight times the storage. The Nitro is a very neat piece of hardware, but LSI's own Cachecade software makes it very simple to tailor the SSD cache and storage ratio to your specific needs, even with their regular card. So these are just two of the many options available out there for storage. So whether you want pure speed, bulletproof reliability, or a nice mix of the two, LSI's got a whole bunch of really cool stuff. And I think the neatest thing about all this stuff is, yes, this is all like server grade, workstation grade stuff, but this technology always finds a way of making it down to the consumer eventually, even if it's, you know, Intel's SRT technology, which is a much less sophisticated and high-end version of this kind of a concept. So this is more of a what's exciting for the future type episode as opposed to uh, we expect everyone and their dog to go out and buy high-end raid cards and like 
copious amounts of SSDs like right now. I mean, you could. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. As always, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.com.